Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. And today we're going to be talking about how to make your LLC be taxed as an S corporation. So if you have a LLC or limited liability company for your business, the default is that it is taxed just as if you were a sole proprietorship, if there's only one owner, or it's taxed as a partnership if there are multiple owners. But you may want it to be taxed as an S corporation instead for the various tax benefits that exist for S corporations. Now, before you make the election with the IRS to turn your LLC into something that is taxed like an S corporation, you have to have your LLC. It has to already be formed and you have to already have gotten your EIN from the IRS. I have videos about both of those things and you can see the links for that below. The deadline to elect to have your LLC be taxed as an S corporation is two months and 15 days after the tax year starts where you want it to count. Now that calculation, if you just formed your LLC yesterday, it's two months and 15 days from yesterday when you formed the LLC even though it's the middle of the year right now. But if you want your LLC to be taxed as an S corporation next year, you can either file it now, you can file it ahead of time and say you want it effective as of January 1st, or you can file it in the first two months and 15 days of next year and have it be effective for that next year. What if it's too late for you? <laughs> what if it's way past two months and 15 days when you want this to be effective? There is a way to still get that S Corp election for your LLC for either this year or even prior years, but it has very specific rules and things that you have to do. So we're going to talk about that, but it'll be more at the end of the video because I want to show you exactly in the form where you're going to do that. So to have your LLC, be taxed as an S Corp, you have to file a form with the IRS. This is a not an online form, sadly. It is a PDF that you're going to fill out and print and sign, and you're either going to fax it to them or you're going to mail it to them. So let's go ahead and look at the various IRS website pages, which I will also have linked below that apply to this and also the PDF. So the first thing you want to do before you make the selection is make sure that you actually are allowed to do it. There's a bunch of different qualifications, most of which are probably true for you. It has to be domestic, so it can't be a corporation formed in another country. It can only have allowable shareholders or owners of this business. So it can be individuals. It can be certain kinds of trusts, like if you have a revocable living trust that owns your business. And it has to be people who are either U.S. citizens or residents, like green card residents. This is a thing that tends to trip up my clients is one of the owners is not a US citizen and doesn't live here. They don't have a green card. They're in another country. You cannot be an S corporation, either an LLC taxes an S corporation or a corporation taxes an S corporation. You also have to have no more than 100 shareholders. Most of my clients, this is, <laughs> doesn't, isn't an issue for them, but sometimes people will have outside investors and things like that. And this will come up. The other big thing that comes up is you can only have one class of stock. So sometimes when people get outside investors and they're passive investors or they want their money first or whatever, they'll set up different classes of stock. They'll have preferred stock. They get paid up first because they're preferred, et cetera. You can't do this and be an S Corp. That's C Corp land. So assuming that you meet all the different qualifications, then let's go look at the form that you're going to need to fill out. It's form 2553, election by a small business corporation. And this is the same form if you're a corporation that wants to elect to be an S Corp or if you're an LLC that wants to be elected as, as an S Corp. I'm going to link to the main page on the irs.gov website that has these forms. But since links may change, all you have to do is go to the IRS's website and search for form 2553. And then you'll see that the links come up there just in case these links change in the future. So there's a form, which is a PDF that you're going to fill out, and then there are instructions for it. I recommend that you pull up the instructions and have them handy because you're going to need that information later. But let's go ahead and look at form 553. The first page tells you where you file. So in half of the states, you're filing it in Kansas City, Missouri, and the other half of the states, you're filing it in Utah. 
but they also have fax numbers, which are two different fax numbers, depending upon where you're located. It's probably a good idea to fax it in instead of mailing it, because if you mail it, who knows if the post office is going to lose it. And then also it'll take longer. And I actually think they process that slower because someone has to literally open up the envelope and everything. During the 2020-2021 situation, the IRS had literally like truckload tractor trailers full of mail that was unopened. So faxing will avoid that kind of a problem. I don't know how much faster it will be because they're very, very, very behind, but probably faster than the mail. So next, let's actually look at Form 553. Some of the beginning parts are fairly simple. You're going to put the name of the LLC. So Potts Weinstein Financial Consulting LLC is my made up name for today. You're going to put the EIN, which you need to have already gotten. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't remember how many numbers it is. All right. The number, street, and room or suite number, the date incorporated, which is the date you formed this thing. So let's say we formed it um, 5-1-2022, just as a random date. Um, San Francisco, California, 933. Date, state of incorporation. So let's say we formed it in California. Check the applicable boxes if the corporate entity after applying for EIN changed its name or address. So if I made this, business as of May 1st. And right now I'm recording this on May 6th. I haven't changed the name or address, but if it's been a while, you might have done that since you formed the EIN. So that's one of the things you would check there. Election is to be effective for tax year beginning month, day, year. So if you want it to be effective on the day you formed your LLC, then you would put that date here, 05, 01, 2022. But let's say it's here in 2022, in May 2022, and you want it to be effective for the tax year 2023. So you'd put January 1st, 2023. It's that straightforward. You just to fi figure out which year you want it to count. And if it's you started your business in the middle of the year, it's the middle of the year. Otherwise, it's usually going to be January 1st. Speaking of tax years, Section F is about what tax year are you going to be using? So most businesses, especially most small businesses, have a tax year that's the calendar year, January 1st through December 31st. But occasionally it makes sense to not have that be your tax year. So let's say you're a business that you're, you sell on eBay and you know 90% of your revenue happens around the holidays, around you know December, November kind of time frame. It may not make sense to have your tax year in December 31st because then you're going to have like returns coming back and you're still going to be shipping things that are late for the holidays. Like it will just be a big mess and you don't have time to deal with closing at the end of the year. So it can make sense for seasonal businesses like that, especially the ones that are kind of December big sale businesses to shift their tax year to be a different set of months, you know, so it could be uh, September through August or something. If you're going to do this, you need to have to tell the IRS, obviously. So let's say you're gonna have your tax year be some other year, then you would state that here and you would you later on are gonna have some other things too, but most of you are just gonna pick calendar year. Now this part G says applies to people of more than 100 shareholders where you can have, if people are members of family that there's married a couple or something and they, if you count them all as being kind of one person that's under 100, you probably have, one or two or three owners for this corporation or for this LLC. So it's probably not an issue for you. Name and title of officer or legal representative who the IRS may call for more information and that telephone number. So if you're filling this out yourself, you're going to put your own name and then the title of that you have for your LLC. So I'm just going to say member. That's a generic title for anyone who owns an LLC, but maybe you're the manager, maybe the president, you're maybe the CEO, like whatever title you're using. Phone number. This part I is about the late election and we're going to talk about that later. Then you're signing this under penalty of perjury, your signature, your title, and then the date. This signature, you do not want it to be an e-signature, okay? Using Adobe Acrobat or using whatever e-signature form. You want to actually print this out and sign with a wet pen. It used to be that they kind of relaxed days ago about e-signatures, but lately they've been rejecting things that were not signed with a wet pen. So sign it with a pen. If it's a blue pen, that's even better because it makes it look more real. All right, page two. 
This is where the owners of this business agree to be an escort. And so the idea is when you're signing on this first page, you're signing as the president like or the manager or whatever, or the member. You don't necessarily have to be an owner to sign that because you could just be running the business and not actually own it. Here, the owners all have to sign and all of them have to sign. So first you're gonna put your name and then you're gonna put, this is a made up address. You're gonna put your name and your address and everything. And then you're gonna have your, your signature as the owner and the date that you sign it. And I'm gonna talk about the shareholders consent statement. The number of shares or percentage of ownership. I use a, usually do this as a percent because that is easier to communicate to the IRS. So if I'm the only owner, I own 100%. This two and you own 50-50, 50-50. Date acquire, acquired, if you just form this business, then it's going to be the date you set up the business most likely, unless you bought it. You need your social security number and then your tax year end date. So if you just do normal, regular taxes where it's a calendar year, then it's 12-31. But in the, even individuals can have a tax year that's different. And sometimes if all of your income comes in through this business, you want the tax year to match up. Otherwise, it'll be a big mess. So something to be aware of if you decide to have a different tax year. And then you're going to sign here and date it. So here's what you're agreeing to, that under penalty of perjury, that you consent to this election and you've read all this different stuff and that it has all the relevant facts and everything is true, correct, and complete. Your consent is binding and may not be withdrawn. And if you're seeking relief for a late file election, which we're going to talk about in a minute, then you declare in a penalty perjury that you have reported your income on all effective tax returns on your personal tax returns as if it was an S corporation already. So let's say it's here in 2022 and you actually thought you did this and you didn't. And so you filed your taxes, your business's taxes and your personal taxes for 2021 already and you acted as if it was an S corporation. And then the you now realizing you never did this form and now you're going back to fix it. Probably the IRS would have told you once you filed your tax form, but sometimes they might not have gotten to it yet. So as soon as you realized, you go ahead and, and file this. And the idea is you acted as if it was true already. So that's gonna be part of what goes into the cons into being able to receive it. Also here, you're gonna put the name of the LLC and the EIN again, just on every single paper. Part two isn't, isn't gonna to apply to most of you. This is if you wanted a tax year that's not the calendar year. So you're gonna talk about you're adopting a new tax year, you're changing it, you've decided it's a different tax year that makes sense for your business and that you have a purpose, etc. So this only applies to you if you're selecting a different tax year. And if you're going to select a different tax year, you probably do want to talk to a accountant or tax preparer about what exactly tax year makes sense for your particular business and what the advantages and disadvantages are. Part three is if you're a qualified subchapter S trust QSST, like that's not going to apply to almost everybody. So I wouldn't worry about this. And if you are that, then you need to go talk to somebody about that. The last part gives you the information about getting this late qualification. If you've missed the two months and 15 days, there's certain things you have to state way back up here on the first page under penalty of perjury that first they have to actually be true because you're stating a penalty of perjury and then you have to state them here to be able to get this late election. I've always had it be granted. If if you say the right stuff then and it's actually true, then they'll grant it. So let's look at the instructions to determine what the things are that you need to say. So if you look at the instructions for form 2553, you're going to be doing, since you're an LLC that wants to be taxed as an S Corp, you are a entity eligible to elect to be treated as a corporation. And so if you're late, you want that relief. So let's click on that and it goes us down to the um, place that has all the information we need. So in this section, you're going to type the stuff that you have to agree to. So you're going to say that you're an eligible entity, that you intended to be cl classified as of the date on line E, and the date on line E is that date you picked for it to be effective, that it's, it was filed within three years and 75 days of that date. So obviously that has to be true. That the only reason you failed to qualify is because it wasn't timely filed. 
that pretty much says the exact same thing, which I don't know why they has to two different lines. Then the entity either either hasn't had to file taxes yet because the taxes aren't due, or if it did, if taxes were due, it filed the S corp tax return because S corporations have to file a separate tax return. They don't pay taxes directly to the federal government, but they have to file a tax return, and then a K one gets is given to the owners, and that money gets put on their personal tax return, and then they pay taxes. And then you have reasonable cause for your failure and act to diligently to correct the mistake. You pretty much just say you have reasonable cause for the failure and have diligently attempted to um, correct the mistake. And then all the shareholders also testify to this and agree. And so if all of that is true, then you can get the late relief. And so far, I've always had that granted. Typically, we're not applying, you know, two years later, we're, we just miss the two months and 15 days because it's, three months or you know it's something really short or four months and typically what happens is my client was planning on have their LLC be taxed as sole prop and then they talk to their accountant and they're like oh no we need to have a be taxed as an S corp and that's why we're making the election a little bit late but it's not like really actually late in the sense of years late and as I said before you're going to either mail this or fax it I think it's a good idea to go ahead and fax it by the way you can get their late relief when you're filing your tax return. So let's say you you meant to do that this year in 2022 and you totally haven't done this. And it is February of 2023 and you wanna file your tax return for 2022 and get this S Corp thing. You could enclose it with your tax return. That's typically what is done at that point instead of sending it separately because I think that ends up being more confusing for the IRS. But so we're assuming you're not sending this with your tax return. You're sending it separately. And so you'd mail it or fax it to the appropriate address, depending upon what state you're in. Now, they're supposed to determine on the election in 60 days. It used to be that they would do that. But in the last couple of years, they haven't. They're very, very far behind. They haven't really stated what you're supposed to do because they're, they state, oh, if it hasn't been done in 60 days, then you... You know, you're supposed to call us, etc. There is a specific phone number here in the instructions, 1-800-829-4933, that you can call if you haven't gotten a response. I have not had to try to do that to actually see if someone answers that number and if you can get a response. I think it's much more likely that if you fax it, you'll get a response quicker because my concern is that if you mail it, your envelope is sitting in some big giant pile of mail that hasn't been unopened and they can't even tell you anything about it because it's not in the files yet. So if you do fax it, you're going to keep the original and keep it in your files. If you mail it, make a copy first before you mail it. That way you know that it was sent. If you are not going to fax it if you're going to mail it and you want to make sure that you have some kind of receipt you have to send it either certified or registered mail um, certified is cheaper than registered mail so that's most likely what you do or you can also send it with a designated private delivery service which a designated private delivery service means fedex ups and dhl so you can use one of those services and uh, you'll get information from them too Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. This video was made per special request of some of my Patreon supporters. So if you would like to have a video made to answer your specific questions you are having with your business, you can become a Patreon supporter by clicking on the link below and support the channel and get your specific video requests made. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, feel free to ask them below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. And of course, subscribe if you would like to get more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.